Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red to the Comp video, we're going to be discussing who is off of AMD's Christmas card list. And that is thanks to a leaked Ryzen review. That's right, an actual review has been leaked by CPC Hardware, also known as Canard PC Hardware, which is a French uh, PC hardware magazine. Now, number 31 has just hit the sh uh, shelves in store, and it would appear that they have actually issued full benchmarks with the Ryzen 8 core processor up against a myriad of competitors. And that includes AMD's older architectures as well as of course Intel's latest and greatest. Now before we start going into the actual benchmarks themselves, I do want to point out a couple of caveats. The first of which is that they are reviewing an engineering sample. Now the reason I am stressing this is because the 2D315 1A 2M 88E, to give it its very easy to pronounce and very easy to remember name, is clocked at just 3.15 gigahertz base, 3.3 gigahertz with all core boost, and 3.5 with single core boost. Now, the reason that this is worth noting is a couple um, of uh, pretty major points actually. The first is that retail samples are going to hit 3.4 gigahertz plus. Now, AMD have been fairly hush-hush on what the final turbo frequencies will be. All I've said is that it is going to be 3.4 gigahertz plus. Some processors will have uh, higher clocks. Now, there are some rumors, although this is not confirmed by AMD, that there will also be a more expensive variant of the 8-core models, and we can presume that they will have higher clock speeds achievable via overclocking. And the second thing is that, obviously, those uh, clock speeds are going to be higher out of the gate. The second thing for us to remember is, supposedly, the engineering samples are still not 100% finished yet. And there were some reports, and I covered these just a few days ago, that AMD were actually pouring more voltage into Ryzen than the final retail silicon is going to actually be having run through it. Now, I'm not certain because obviously no one's telling you um, whether that version that was being demoed is exactly the same as this. The one that was running at the New Horizon event was exactly the same piece of silicon. You can only guess and I can only guess. Now, what we do know is that Supposedly, the version that was running um, a couple of benchmarks at New Horizon is it was running, at least according to AMD's own screen, at 3.45 gigahertz. So, I don't know. Uh, it's a bit confusing. Regardless of all of that, let's get into the actual benchmarks. Now, once again, um, we have a whole mess of them. And what they've done is basically amalgamate them into relative performance. So we have render benchmarks, gaming benchmarks, and uh, how much energy it sucks from the uh, wall socket, essentially. So as you can see, uh, with the render benchmarks being multi-threaded, typically render benchmarks mean that you've got like Mental Ray, W Prime, POV, Blender, 3ds Max, and all of the other video encoding crap. And yes, crap is a technical term that reviewers use. Trust me. Ryzen has come out pretty well, actually. It's between a hexacore and an octacore, which is a 6800K or a 6900K, respectively. Now, given the fact that, yes, retail Z Ryzen is going to be running at higher clocks, it's doing pretty well. It is also whooping, and I do mean whooping. It is beating its ass like it has stolen its lunch money. Um, with the FX 8370, it's about a 60% improvement, which is kind of bonkers. To be honest with you, this is actually a very positive score for Ryzen. But let's move into something which is more notoriously single thread in nature, and those are games. Now, you've got a pretty nice myriad of different applications. Those include Far Cry 4, Grid, Autosport, Armor 3... Uh, the Witcher 3, and Anno 2070. Now, there were some notes regarding the system specifications at the AMD event. I'm going to assume, if this is the same review system, they were using a Titan X, I believe. 
Now, I don't 100% know, and I can't read French very well, to say the least, so I am doing a bit of Google Translate and all of that stuff, and also looking at a couple of threads on a couple of forums, and I can't find out if that is the same GPU. I'm going to make the assumption it probably is, because it would make absolutely no sense for them to be running this on, like, you know, a GTX 760. I'm obviously being a bit silly with that, but still. Anywho... Ryzen is outperforming the FX 8370 about 30%, slightly more, about 32-ish. And this puts it on par with the i5-6600. Now, you might say, well, that's kind of crap, but you've got to recall that games typically are very single-thread dependent, and the fact that Ryzen is running at lower clock speeds, I'm not really surprised it's losing out. It does, however, show that Skylake itself and Ryzen are very close to one another if you start taking IPC gains into the uh, equation. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, I am not really pro-AMD or pro-Intel. It's like I would always suggest to you buy whatever's best um, because these are reviews given um, through engineering samples. I'm going to say that you should probably add about... 10-ish percent on some of the review scores. I'm basing this on the numbers that have been touted by AMD themselves, but whether that's accurate or not, we don't know. Finally, let's talk about power consumption. So power consumption is very impressive. Ryzen is drawing about 96 watts, which is a 20-ish um, watt less difference than the FX8370. This puts it at roughly on par with the 6900K, which is pretty impressive. Now, obviously, it's not going to compete with the low end, with the lower end uh, ICE fives like the 6400, which is something we never really anticipated for it to do. Uh, and primarily, of course, this is a benefit of the 14nm process. So, what does all of that mean for us? Does that mean that Ryzen is a disappointment? Well, here are my conclusions. And there are a whole bunch of them that I could stop running into with this. But I don't want to at the moment because I have a feeling more stuff is going to link. So the first thing is that, well, it's showing that AMD are probably not bullshitting us regarding the IPC gains. Now, I didn't think they were because we've all seen the Blender demos. We've all seen the, you know, the, the handbrake demos and God knows what else has popped up. So I never really thought to myself, well, gee whiz, I believe AMD are lying about the IPC gains. But ultimately, I always anticipated that they were choosing benchmarks which best represented their processor. And that is kind of understandable. The second thing is it's going to come down to what the final retail silicon is. So in other words, clock speed gains, if there is any slight tweaks to the um, actual platform itself, for example, BIOS updates, maybe slightly uh, improve. Um, performance on memory controllers, whatever they manage to do, it might improve performance a couple of extra percent. I'm only speculating on that. I don't know. And the final thing, and perhaps the most important of all, what is the pricing of the chip versus the Intel equivalent? I could make a very compelling argument to you that if Zen is about five to ten, I'm sorry, Ryzen is about five to ten, five to ten percent faster than these results show which is possible then it's very hard to recommend a 6600 or a 6700k presuming the price of ryzen is not exponentially higher if it's like roughly in the same ballpark and you're a gamer it's very easy to recommend ryzen especially if you do streaming you do video encoding or you do anything else simply because of the number of additional threads with all of that said if you have someone who's already got a 6700K, and I'm just using that as an example, and you've got a pretty decent-ish overclock on it, and you only do gaming, I would probably say that you're not necessarily going to be that interested in Ryzen, which is fair enough. I mean, to be honest, you can probably be on something like a 2600K or a 3770K, and you probably wouldn't be interested in, let's say, Skype Lake or KB Lake either. Simply because that right now, especially as we move into 4K gaming, let's just be totally honest with one another. The GPU is really the king. 
uh, especially if you start doing things such as super sampling or should I say virtual super resolution or uh, any down sampling or you start um, putting in um, injecting uh, post-processing anti-aliasing or doing whatever it actually ravages your GPU at higher levels and that's assuming that you also don't want 60 FPS or greater so most of that of course ultimately is going to also be very influential when it comes to the GPU so anyway these are some early results I don't believe they're fake because accordingly from what I've read this publication seems to be well respected in France if anyone knows differently please let me know in the comments or message me on Facebook I don't as I said I don't really read this publication so I'm only getting secondhand information on that I however do slightly frown on the shenanigans using engineering samples um, I imagine that once again is probably bumped them off of AMD's Christmas card list so that's kind of uncool in that respect the issue I have with stuff like this and the reason I keep stressing the fact it's engineering samples and non-final clock speeds is because people tend to read this stuff and then they associate that performance with the res end result forever and I don't believe that's 100% fair um, I would always advise you to keep an open mind wait for the final results of the processor and then tally up regardless of your budget versus what the processor can actually do and it's like if the CPU happens to be uh, slightly slower in games, just for example, but those additional threads are very tasty for you and you do a lot of 3D, 3D work, then by golly gosh, you probably would be better off with Ryzen. But on the other hand, if you've got, once again, a good Skylake setup, you might not be that interested in Ryzen, but we can only wait and see. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. Uh, things are obviously going to slow down a little bit over Christmas. I will be putting out the odd bits and pieces. I am working on the Nintendo Switch thing, as you've all requested. I did a straw poll, and it came out rather handily on top, so I'll be doing an analysis on that. So I'm doing a little bit of reading up uh, right now. So hopefully that will be out in the early part of next week, he says, looking at the date on the calendar, because he can't actually remember what date it is. Oh, it is a Saturday. Okay, so I am right. Sorry. My brain is like mush today. To be honest, I didn't sleep particularly amazingly. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye.